Hello everyone. I'm going to do something I normally don't do, and it's because when I write, I have um, I can slow down my uh, hyperactive brain and put my thoughts down better. So I'm going to be reading right off my blog today uh, a post I called "Hard Personal Lessons Learned in Christ." And here we go. If you have met Jesus Christ, you must continue to follow him in spirit and in truth. Despite all the theology about Jesus Christ and the Father, it is our deeply personal relationship that we must keep intact should we wish to continue in him till the day we are absent from the body, should we wish to enter into his kingdom. You see, the issue is our sin. It must be put to death within us. We who know him must strive to enter in with him each and every day. The Lord God will strive with us in turning ourselves over for execution by means of the cross. The old man must be replaced with the new man, who is Christ in us, the hope of glory. Doing things for Jesus is a no-go and is what most people do who are initially regenerated. Yet they replace actually walking with the Lord in obedience to his voice within them for religious regimentation of some sort. Turning oneself over for execution, the old man is most difficult, as this is the way the innermost sins are put to death, and most are unwilling to do so for a comfortable life within the world. The scripture tells of the election of the saints by grace, and that is, and that it is the Lord who is doing the work in us, the actual elect brethren. Yet we are responsible to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling, as the scripture says. I'm scrolling down here. Salvation is is the continuing work of the cross of Christ within his sheep who hear his voice. It is not a simple fire insurance having once started with him. Yea, it is his work alone within us which performs the sanctification into his image. Yet it is sin that we must turn over to the cross or not. That is the real issue. It is much easier to simply go through a routine of religiosity than to be executed daily. In contrast, systematic theologies run on and are dependent upon the herd of peoples to keep them in operation. Very few, if any today, operate on trusting and actually moving in Christ. This is why Paul called them enemies of the cross, meaning that they refused to be crucified, death unto new life. The leadership of these type of organizations are what the Apostle John called antichrists, or alternatives to actually walking and abiding in Christ ourselves. These are hard lessons learned of and in myself. They are not seminary learned lessons, but personal ones. It has taken me many years to understand just what it means to be a disciple, and mostly because the Lord had to work very hard to put to death in my own natural understanding of doctrines taught to me by those um, <clears throat> who are not with him, the church system embedded all around us today. These are the greatest threat and counterfeits to actually moving and abiding in Christ ourselves. The sly fox, the devil, understands this, and he focuses his attack on the heart of the brethren, and that's where our Lord is found, and shifts it into the head using doctrines, theology, arguing, in general, false brethren, the unsaved in parentheses, to reinforce his efforts. In closing, if you wish to do something for Jesus, start by being still and listening to him who will direct your paths. 
and don't put any man between you and your Lord. Now I'm going to just go over the above uh, paragraph because it might have might have thrown some people how I wrote it. Um, I put the slide pox, the devil understands us and focuses his attacks on the heart of the brother. That's where your faith is. That's where Jesus Christ lives. That's why I put where the Lord is found. He he said to Eve, surely you don't think um, in the scriptures. So Satan focuses things into our head, our natural understanding, using doctrines, theology, um, you know, backbiting, uh, pride, uh, whatever he can. And he introduces false brother, and that's the unsaved. People don't really know Jesus Christ to reinforce his efforts into a church system. That's why a real elder has to make sure that these people don't enter in. Because this is a deeply personal thing I'm talking about in following the Lord Jesus Christ. You can't do it by a herd, in a herd mentality. You can't sign up for Jesus. Jesus has to do a work in you, and then you're responsible for your walk with him. Um, most people, Jesus said, will not enter in. And that's because they refuse to be crucified. That's why Paul called them enemies of the cross. These are hard lessons learned that I just read, that I've learned the hard way. Um, and I have to say, after um, my near-death experience in the Army, God used that to um, draw me closer to, him, to himself. And, of course, he was next to me, absent from the body, present with the Lord, when my heart stopped that day. So I'm just sharing with the actual brethren what I have learned about moving and abiding in Jesus Christ. And we are involved in that. We are responsible before our own master stand or fall. It's not a ticket. We're not have we haven't had our ticket punch to move into into heaven. We are responsible uh, for moving and abiding in the Lord Jesus Christ and turning over for crucifixion the old man so that it can be replaced, which is known as sanctification, in the image of Jesus Christ. Good day.